In the mid-2000s, a huge real estate boom caused home values to increase significantly. The higher costs made it difficult for many low-income and middle-class households to find affordable housing. That boom subsided, and there are now a large number of foreclosed homes, resulting in home prices in general sinking to their lowest levels in many years. In theory, that should mean more affordable housing for renters and owners alike. Sadly, that's not the case. An ever-increasing number of residents are finding that they are paying more than they can afford for housing. Nina Bandoni, chairperson of the Low Income Housing Leadership Network, which is part of the Health and Human Services Coordinating Council, says families are particularly affected. It's very, very difficult right now for people to purchase homes. Uh, very difficult for them to get mortgages. Right now, only one lender is lending, and that's FHA. So for a home buyer to enter in the marketplace, it's, it, it's very difficult, even though the um, interest rates are low. Underwriting criteria is, is much in, increased, and um, it makes it difficult for someone to purchase a home. The rental market is becoming more and more competitive. More and more people are turning to rentals for a variety of reasons. One of those reasons could be that they have been foreclosed out of their home or they've had to leave their home for, for one of the economic reasons. Um, or um, they're just coming out, they're unemployed, or they're just getting their first jobs, and it would be natural for them to be looking for an apartment as opposed to making a home purchase. That causes an increase in rental demand and is in turn um, pushing rents upward and making it more and more difficult for lower income families to either A, purchase a home or B, rent a home. According to Neighborhood Works America, in the U.S., one out of every 200 homes are foreclosed and every three months, 250,000 new families face foreclosure of their homes. In Florida, 49% of homeowners with mortgages are underwater owing more than their home is worth. A health crisis or the loss of a job are two of the main reasons homeowners cannot afford their home. Many foreclosed homes have sat for a long period of time and are in need of costly repair work. This has made them even more expensive to buy. And renters are not immune to the housing crisis. Some owners of multi-unit properties have been unable to make their mortgage payments, putting them in foreclosure and putting renters at risk. Rent also becomes hard to pay with the loss of a job or medical problems. To add to the crisis, many programs designed to help at-risk families have either gone away or had their budgets severely cut. That lack of affordable housing is taking its toll on an ever-increasing number of families. China Ward is a young mother of two who knows what it's like to be homeless. It's not a good feeling. I mean, you can't, you can't really hold your head down because, I mean, everybody goes through something to become somebody. But, I mean, once you get out of it, it's not something you'd want to go back to. Now Ward lives in a two-bedroom apartment with her boyfriend and two children. But for low-income families, just a little bad luck puts housing in jeopardy. Around last year, I was working two full-time jobs. After I finished school, I went to school first, nursing assistant. I got two full-time jobs. My boyfriend was working. He lost his job right after I started mine. And... I was working them for a few months and then I started to get sick. I was having stomach problems and he didn't have money. So I had to let one job go because I had to go to the doctor. So we became a one income family. Every, basically everything we did was with one income and we were able to pay only partial of the bills and the rent just got completely high. We got about three months behind. John and Laura O'Keefe were already dealing with substandard housing when John was let go from his job. We were living month to month, and um, there was multiple issues with mold and uh, infestation with roaches and spiders. And we have a three-year-old daughter, and we have put in multiple um, notice, you know, complaints saying that this needed to be handled, and uh, nothing was being handled. And what happened is the place was sold to somebody and they were getting ready to remodel and raise the rent. And then uh, we were living, we were on a month to month. And basically they decided, they sent, gave us a letter saying they would not renew our lease. And that we had, uh, first it was a three day eviction notice. And then um, obviously they can't do it in three days. And then they said, basically we'll give you to the end of the month. 
Rosa Martinez lived in a two-bedroom apartment with her four daughters for $800 per month and needed more space. What she found in her housing search was depressing. You know, everybody want to have the American dream. And um, it was, it was, I was surprised that only a few, certain people can afford it. Not everybody can afford it. So. Fortunately for China Ward and the O'Keeffe's, there are some programs like the Health and Human Services Family Homeless Prevention Program. That program helped both families with rent, deposit, and bills. Rosa Martinez and her family now have their own home thanks to Habitat for Humanity. But there are still thousands of families not able to find affordable housing in Pinellas County and across Florida. That means much, much more is still needed to be done. There are some mechanisms in place, however, for affordable housing. One of them is the Sadowski Act, which had a 10 cent um, fee that was added to uh, trans real estate transactions. And then it was put in a pool and then uh, put out throughout the whole state of Florida for local jurisdictions to run various types of housing programs. In addition to that, there was community development block grant funds and home funds that are administered through HUD. Those funds are typically used for such things as down payment and closing cost assistance, rental assistance, and uh, first-time homebuyers programs, as well as housing rehab programs and um, emergency repair programs. The Sadowski funds are currently um, in jeopardy of being allocated to other things within the state budget. And each year, we work really hard to try to preserve those funds to be used for affordable housing. Um, CDBG funds and home funds, those are both run through HUD, through the federal government. Have, those have been cut consistently over the last several years as a, a part of the budget cuts that have been happening on the federal side. With those funds being reduced consistently, uh, fewer and fewer programs are available for low-income families, and this is a big concern for us. And so we would really like to see these programs being supported and preserved to help low-income families.